Uh, this is Rifat Bali, Editor-in-Chief of The Thinker. Here I am uh, with uh, folks of New York City, and I want to ask them about how the virus and the protests have affected them. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi folks, so uh, can I have your names and uh, occupations? Diana van Goetveld. <coughs> Bart van Goetveld, I'm a physicist. I'm a, I'm a uh, adjunct at Columbia. Wow. And I'm retired. <laughs> so um, how has the virus impacted you? Uh, well, I think it's been pretty terrible because I think uh, the way people have uh, not been able to communicate, there's loneliness, people are going uh, partly psychotic, and I'm afraid there's going to be a lot of suicides when people get so desperate that, from loneliness that they will kill themselves. So I think this is only the beginning, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not as anxious as I was at the outset because we would hear a lot of ambulances going by and, and hear terrible things on the news. And in the morning, uh, after a couple of weeks, I just stopped watching the morning news on television because I felt it was just ramped up and I felt it's, it's uh, heightening my anxiety. So, but oddly enough, we get used to it. I, I think in our little area, we're quite comfortable. We have a nice store across the street from us, and, and it's not too full, and they have everything. The campus is wonderful. Especially with our students. <laughs> it's, it's like the botanical garden of Morningside Heights. It's really very well, nice. I can't go into the lab to finish my experiments either, so it's, I'm locked out. Yeah. So are you a adjunct professor of uh, what department, sir? <coughs> physics. Physics, wow, okay. Well, you know, my genius is to study physics at Harvard, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, well, good luck uh, <laughs> when they will let everybody back in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, as an adjunct professor, how, uh, how has the virus impacted you in more teaching? Well, I haven't been teaching because I'm, I'm really not a professor. I'm, I'm a research, oh. adjunct research scientist. And while we were in the middle of trying to finish an experiment, I just couldn't finish it. You know, I was not be there. So, it was supposed to be a talk in July of a meeting uh, regarding artificial organs, and it was canceled, so we had a paper ready for that. Yeah. So it's... it's uh, Everything just sort of... It's very hurtful. Stopped. They, they really don't know when they're going to open, and everything is sort of in flux. It's very uncomfortable, and it makes for an anxious climate in a sense that you don't know what you're going to be doing. So we just hope that uh, all the schools in the country are going to figure out some way. Uh, right now I would say they certainly haven't figured it out. And I think they're waiting to see what happens over the summer. Yeah. You know, a lot of things about this virus is the uh, thoughts on it change. You know, they, they have one model of how this is working and then something comes in that contradicts that <laughs> and so it you know there's a lot to find out it's not well understood no and, uh, no of course with trump <laughs> in the white house it's a tragedy and uh, he's a tragedy uh, i don't feel sorry for him i just think he's a horror and he's made everything worse everything worse um, do you guys feel more, more worried or nervous or peaceful than when the virus first began? Uh, when it first began? Yeah, I, I guess I'm a little bit more used to it, but there's still this uh, open-ended. We don't know when will this really end. Uh, I know we're uh, starting phase one on Monday, but we'll see. But also with the protesting, it's been sort of a... a disconnect because we've been living with these uh, admonitions you know to distance and wear masks and take all sorts of precautions and suddenly you look and you see people throng together and we wonder you know what are, is this going to change things are, are there going to be really upticks in this uh, we'll see yeah. <laughs> if there aren't then that will be a mystery well, another I thing to this solve. evening to a very good friend in Palo Alto <laughs> I guess the universities have different ways of looking at it. 
but Columbia surely is very much in the dark about what they're going to do, and they're very, very guarded as to what they're willing to say. And they don't know. But there's a feeling that everything's up to change anyway. Yeah, as soon as some new factor comes in, it. Uh, Are you connected with Columbia too? Um, more than my dad is. He's a PhD student here. What? Uh, he's a PhD student here. Yes. Uh, he's doing his PhD in math education. Oh, uh, my daughter's a middle school math teacher. She's yeah. been teaching remotely. <laughs> yeah, it's effective as well. I'm a high school student. Oh, so I'm a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be applying to colleges um, uh, se September, October this year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of like my extracurricular project uh -huh. outside of math and science. And you don't know what to expect or <laughs> um, what to... In terms of the virus? Uh, yeah, aim, aim for or... So, in terms of the virus, uh, you know, we're all kind of scared, uh, my family, because we don't know if it's going to come back in the summer because uh, other parts of the of the world they're hot uh india you know bangladesh they're hot but you know they're experiencing the outbreaks maybe it's just because it's high density but you never know uh, right. i think you never know where the next hot spot is going to emerge right and the, the weird thing i think about the virus is even the rich countries can't fare with it better than the poorer ones much. No, I know. Yeah. New Zealand. <laughs> yes. But they, you know, they're contained. Yeah, they're contained. They manage. Um, you know, uh, you guys are um, the elderly. Uh, were you guys more worried than others when the virus first came about? A little bit. A little bit, but I, I felt that uh, sure we're more likely to have bad effects from it, but nothing is for sure, you know, because young, some younger people have done very badly with it, and, and then uh, about a month ago there was a lady who was 108, and she was better after two weeks, it was <laughs> on the news, yeah. I said, okay, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, vaccines are always there. That's right, yeah, yeah, there are plenty of outliers, so, no, I don't know what would happen to us if, if we were to to get it, I, I, uh, well, I thought I had it, actually. Uh, really? Well, when I went to... Oh, oh, sure. But you didn't. <laughs> no, but everybody next to me. Oh, he had to go. The emergency room, they all had it. And, uh, yeah, he could hear them coughing. You had to go to the ER during the... Some other... For other, other reason. But, yeah, you know, but he could hear things me, around him. COVID. It's, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Um, uh, there was another fact I... I injured my ankle uh, uh, during this, uh, you know, COVID time. And, you know, I just stayed at home. I didn't go to the... Well, yeah, that itself is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as a scientist, especially, so how do you, how did you uh, view, uh, view the virus when it first came about, and how do you view it now? I have great faith and confidence in, uh, in uh, Dr. Fauci, and of course Trump didn't like him, and it just infuriated me when Trump pretended to know something medical. He doesn't know anything about anything. But when he pretended to know about medicine and suggested, oh, just inject some Clorox, well, that's a great <laughs> idea. Uh, Not really. In fact, it, it was so startling that Clorox itself put out ads in the paper that said, don't do that. Uh, it's just astounding. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, I think there's some very good people, uh, epidemiologists, who know what to do and what not to do. Yeah. And, I think they will come up with a vaccine. Uh, probably, or treatments. Probably yeah. several people will come simultaneously and they will get the Nobel Prize. That's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We can't have more than three on the Nobel Prize, but there are other prizes too. Yeah. So I think, I think it's going to be all right, but maybe not in my lifetime, since uh, I'm getting up there in years, so we'll see. <laughs> Does this something else come after this? I, I don't know. There's a resurgence. I mean, that's, yeah. Who knows? Perhaps the second wave. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Or some completely new thing that has to be uh, figured out. People are gathering in protest. Uh, Not just in America, but a lot. Yes, that's right. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Sure. And it's... I think that's going to be very, very significant in the uptick of, of cases. And as a matter of fact, um, there have been... Uh, uh, case studies on how many people have been positive, have tested positive, even after they went to protest, and the numbers have started going up. 
uh, in those studies. Um, uh, what do you guys think uh, make of the protest? Uh, I'm, I, I'm not surprised. I, I think uh, it's just something that has grown, but it's always been simmering. under there, simmering, yeah. And, uh, well, the original video of, uh, I didn't know that that was a tactic to put your knee into someone's neck, and I, I, I don't know why someone would Right. choose to do that, you know, especially well, if someone a, is handcuffed that was the first and it really saw precipitated a, something. A murder scene in action. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but today with cell phones, uh, this has been going on for a while. Well, I think black people were treated terrible. And uh, I came to this country in 1940, we lived in Virginia, and uh, when my mother asked the cleaning lady to have lunch with her, she said, oh, I can't do that because she was black. And my mother said, of course you can. Sit down. We were from Berlin. I was from Berlin, Germany. And we saw how black people were treated. It was terrible. It's still terrible. Uh, but it's a very complicated issue, and uh, it's not going to go away. It's just not going to go away. But it hopefully will get better. Um, you came uh, to America in 1940 uh, from Berlin, Germany. So, what, can you give us some context why or uh, why you came here? Well, we went to Sweden so we, Hitler wouldn't kill us. <laughs> Jewish yeah. refugees. I see, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went to Sweden and stayed there for almost a year. It was 1939, and then in 1940 came to New York, and then lived in Richmond, Virginia for the first five years. His father was a research bacteriologist. For some reason, so we had to find a, <laughs> a physician. Oh, uh, your dad is a bacteriologist? Well, he was. Oh, yeah. My yeah. dad, he's quite well known in Germany, yes. Are you interested in that? I was going to ask you know, what he thought of the virus. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> well I, I'm sure he, I think he would not have been surprised because he, when he was in Germany, he, he made some statement that, that came into some books that uh, if you don't treat everybody, diphtheria will not stay with the Jews and the, and the people that you just sort of not be cared for. So it was a similar kind of thing, you know, certain uh, illnesses, you, you, they don't stay contained. Right? They're for everybody, no matter who you are, and the availability is there. I mean, uh, this, uh, this virus has been called very democratic in, in the sense that it's affected, you know, people up there at the top, uh, like Iranian officials and, you know, very poor people. Yeah, I mean, I come from the Bronx, and, uh, you know, the virus, first of all, shut down all the businesses. Yeah. And then uh, the looters came and then took what's left. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, now it's like um, it's like a barren desert in terms of economy down there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the great shame that the, the the protest marches are very. One can understand them very well. I think they have a good reason for being, but when the looters come in, that ruins everything. Yeah. And uh, that's been going on for, for decades. Um, do you guys think we're going to emerge better uh, as a nation, as a country, out of this virus? Possibly, yeah. If there's a possibility, I I'm hope so. not yeah, I'm sure. I'm cautiously hopeful. Yeah. Cautiously hopeful. And I ask this because, you know, there have been many uh, uh, times in history when economic shocks or, you know, our global shocks like World War II, out of that came the UN, the WHO, UNICEF. Um, so, you know, we all hope for a better future, and hopefully... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hopefully we can have that. Okay. Um, may I ask what research you're doing in, in, in your life? Uh, we're trying to develop a uh, dialysis machine that people wear so they don't have to go to the clinic for dialysis. A wearable artificial kidney, so to, so to speak. What is dialysis? Dialysis is what you need if you have a kidney problem. You have to have your blood cleaned out every two days. So it gets get, circulated get through. The, get the water in the... Because you can't urinate properly. 
you have to have your blood cleaned. And there are clinics that do that all over the world. And the th thing we were working on was something to uh, make it possible to go instead of three times a week to the clinic, go two times a week. And that would save, uh, how much, I forget, something like 20 billion dollars to the U.S. government which pays for this just by eliminating one out of three so it's not two a week instead of three a week. You have more room for more people who need it and you save the money for that one person. So we were pretty close to that. So anyway, I think we'll go now if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, um, uh, my name is Rifat Bali. Uh, you can't shake hands. You <laughs> well, cannot, Bob. We can't shake hands. But can I give you my... Um, my uh, oh, there I am, you know. Just for proof. Oh, okay. Sometimes people ask for a press ID, but uh, that's my student ID in place of that. Uh, your interview on... Um, Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.